one one measure. You know, and that's um, when you're playing this way. Like, there's two ways to go. Like, you can play super fast and um, try to do it that way. I should turn my phone off. Again. And um, but I don't really like that way because the, like when you like if you play like hard bebop and you guys probably played some bebop. Like if you play hard bebop, like you're kind of stuck. Like once you get going that fast, you got it's it's not very it kind of makes things more rigid because you got to be you got to be at the corner when it's time to be at the corner. You know? And um, to me, I think it um, it closes down the music. Um, so when I do it, I play slow. Mm -hmm. like, like if I'm going to use that 47, I'm going to play like about. About that speed. Because I want space in there. Because I want to be able to say, um, I want to play at three times speed. And maybe the saxophone player wants to play half speed. You know, and you can all, it, it gives you, um, it's just more flexible. That's why I like doing that. Um, let me see what I got in my notes here. But that's like the main, um, the main thing I would have to say about it is just don't get in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And and remember, it's like when you're playing time, it's elastic. Like, you, I mean, you can play like March. Straight, straight time. I mean, commercial stuff. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably playing the um, quick track and stuff. Yeah. So that's one. Like that's for you know, for making product. That's kind of what that is. But when you're when you're actually playing time, like you don't have to. <clears throat> like you know, like in um, probably in concert band, you had like rubato section. You know what that is, right? And stuff like that. Time's elastic. Like once you once you've got it going, like I can play. Like you feel it just kind of pull out a little bit. Like you, like once you've got the cycle in your mind, like it's it breathes. Like you don't have to like it's not like it has doesn't have to be that because eventually, what you're playing is it's uh, it's conversation. It's like you know um, really like like a a vocalese like you know nonsense syllable type of thing you know that's what it is you're talking about like an organic feel yeah it's an organic very organic feel and, and like i'm like say like if i'm playing here i'm playing in english and he's going to be playing in turkish but we're still because of that flexibility like like it's his language is going to have like certain things that you know syntax right and like in the musician the same thing like everybody has their own syntax that so it gives you instead of things being side by side going, it's interlocked. And not only not only this way, but this way too. You know, so it, and you give it gives you a bigger, more. Um, a, uh, how do I say? It's more like um, it's just it's it's thicker. It's like if you're painting. Like you can, I can paint something. Um, I can paint something blue, or I can paint something green and yellow and get blue. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what you want to look. That's what you really want to look for, especially like in solo. You won't be able to hear it as much, but when it's like if three guys are doing it, like there's some people who play trio and it sounds like huge, and that's why. You know, because they're they're like simultaneously playing independently. And that's that's why you need that flexibility in there. So if like one guy, you know, wants to play fast here, as long as you can keep steady, you know, you kind of it's, it's like um, like if you're moving mobile home, like you got to move it around to get it the right spot. You can do it that way, you know. And that's that's kind of what you want to do is to get that kind of um, effect. Like, um, have you played odd times at all? I, I that was actually going to be my first question. The um song that I'm currently working on in the studio is uh, 8884, uh, or no, 8884, so it adds up to 36 per measure, and uh, the, the, the last four comes across as kind of, um, kind of
of strange. I was I was going to ask you to, to kind of address the whole you know, asymmetrical time signatures. Well, OK. Kind of what I would say right there, first thing I would say is because that's an, it's an even number, yeah. like it's going to be, it's actually harder yeah. to get it to sound good. Like if you, I'm like the, the two pieces I was like been working on the last few weeks is one's 47, one's 39, yeah. because it's it's easier to turn it, like it's easier to turn it back to one. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing that, it um, when you're playing an even like that, like you're playing like um, like what kind of music is it? Uh, this is instrumental post rock, no singing, um, like 10, 12 minute songs, just long melodic, long melodic. heavy, inst like instrument heavy. Like um, distorted guitar and that kind of stuff. Um, no, rock instruments doing not rock things. Um, a lot of like high tremolo solo guitar parts. Um, big open chords. Uh, a lot of quarter notes. And just a lot of space. A lot of space. Like what tempo are you going? we the song I'm working on now is 92 BPM. So about at 36. Some, some about like. Slightly slow. Slightly slow. Yeah. You're playing eight, 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 four. In that twenty-eight. No, eight, 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 four. Oh, okay. Sorry. So it'd be eight, eight, twelve. So basically, it's a um, thirty-two bar thing with a tag, mm -hmm. more or less. More or less. Yeah. Not exactly a twelve-bar blues, but I mean, I'm, I'm playing four up until the last measure, and then I'm just. Playing. And to, to get it to flip back to the next next measure to one. Well, um, for that kind of thing, like the guys who used to do that a lot for like the early blues guys, mm -hmm. like um, Robert Johnson, those type of people, like they had um, they they had things in blues that like they would have like a little extra four bars and something. Yeah. Like there would be like a it would be like a twelve bar blues, but then it would be or they take a bar away. And those are kind of, um, the best way to do those is to work it off the melody. Like what I would be doing is I'd be, I'd be memorizing the melody. Like does, do you have like a regular melody for this? Yeah, the melody is just straight eighth notes uh, in, it's, uh, it's a D major key, just straight eighth notes all the way through. No rest or anything? No, no, um, it, I mean, I like it, but um, that when it comes down, it's, it's 36, so it's 8, 8, 8, 8, 4. So when it comes down to playing that last four, I'm just matching eighth notes with the guitar to get to flip to the next um, melody. But I'm splitting the eighth notes between kick, snare, hi-hat, and uh, right cymbal. Uh -huh. OK, well, that's, um, I would, what I would do is I would just stick with the melody from the beginning. Yeah. Like, um, because like, there's like basically there's there's playing that's sort of like a melodic playing, mm -hmm. and then there's beat playing, yeah. like you know like mm -hmm. like that kind of beats. Like I don't even I can't even play those parts. Yeah. Seriously, I mean I, I mean I'm old. I played them when I was you know 19, yeah. 15, but um, <clears throat> like I if, in a situation like that, like I would say stay away from playing the beat. Like what I would do. Is that I would I would let my right symbol lead, like I would like match my right symbol with whatever the melody's doing, like you know lead out a few beats here and there, you know, like um, basically what I do the way I play, like if I've got if I've got a um, like say I've got five, I'm gonna have um, three two, like I'm gonna lead out one, so I'm either gonna play. It's hard to talk and do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it is. Like, um, so, um, like that's what I would do. Or you could play like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Like, um, that's what I would do. Like, um, like if you're gonna play eights, you might play um, like you've got two threes and a two. And like, have you divided it up to see how it works out, or have you just been playing one? 
Well, it's it's straight time up until the last uh, four beats, and then it's just I, I have four beats to fill, and I just basically split an eighth note roll uh, between kick, snare, hi hat, and high cymbal. Well, that's if you do that every time, yeah. then it's gonna it, it kind of limit like it limits you, like um, it gets monotonous. Yeah, because like um, it's it's not so much monotonous; it's just that you. You repeat. You have to repeat that pretty much the same thing every time at that spot. So that kind of limit. That's going to limit your solos. Mm -hmm. Like, are there somebody playing solos on it? Yeah. Like three. Yeah. So, um, like I said, what I would do is I would um, look at the melody. Like I would like. Can you read? Do you read notes and stuff? Yeah. yeah. I would. I would get. A, does he have it written down? Uh, he has. He has it tabbed out and guitar tab. Guitar tab. Okay. Yeah. So just um, get a look at the melody. And I, honestly, I would I would like learn to sing the melody mm -hmm. well enough, and I would just just play just a right symbol until I could go with whatever. Like that, and just remember that you you want to go in smooth, 